Alright, welcome back. Um, I'm going to do a video on the uh, kind of a modification of the free wing 80 millimeter A4. I did one already, um, but on the newer one, I'm moving the engine, tank, and pipe about an inch and a half further forward. I think it's going to be the final configuration. It's hopefully going to alleviate a little bit of nose weight and it makes the tank a whole lot easier to install. Uh, so the first thing I did is, um, in the previous videos I uh, talked about cutting out the bottom with a little bitty thin razor saw. I've uh, changed my ways of doing things. I'm using this uh, Home Depot uh, razor. I mean it cuts really good with a sharp blade and it basically takes out no foam at all. So parts glue in almost exact. Uh, so the first thing I did is um, the hatch used to stop right right here. So I cut out a chunk about an eighth inch away from this line right here um, with a slight angle to allow the uh, parts to go in a lot easier. Then I glued that piece onto the hatch and uh, basically that's my excess hatch now to get the engine in and out. Um, I know this freaks out a lot of people when I do this, but it's no problem at all. You glue it back together with a Gorilla Glue. I cut out the bottom here, did a cut here about an eighth inch away from the nylon piece on both ends. So I did not disturb the parts that actually hold the wing on. The only parts I'm really disturbing are the two spar sockets. So um, I cut once again an angle here and an angle here to create a little bit of draft. I stayed away from the line where the uh, wing matches up to so you don't see the joint. And uh, this piece just popped right out. Um, I cut this on an angle. Now it's probably about a 25 degree angle um, on both sides. That worked okay. And when I popped it off, I still had this chunk left in the model that came across here. So I cut that out also and glued that to the first chunk I, I cut out. And the parts fit in exactly. And once again, once you cut the surface, you do not want to disturb the surface at all with any sanding because that's going to disrupt the, uh, the joint when you go ahead and uh, glue the parts back together. So, you know, everything fits in there just perfect. Very minimal gap using the saw or this uh, razor saw. Works really good. Home Depot, about 10 bucks. Um, just use a sharp blade. So um, the first thing I did was uh, locate the tank. Um, I'm using the same tank that I use on the Avante um, and T45. It fits really good. It's the same tank that I'm, I used on the first prototype. It's just in a little bit further forward. And um, you know, once again, you uh, I use the carbon paper technique. Always watch the T33 videos because I go into what I consider a lot of detail on how to do this with the uh, carbon paper. So, um, you know, I got pretty much the foam removed with the carbon paper and uh, I was happy with this location here. And what helped out a lot on this one is since the tank is further forward and these lines represent the spar, the spar is, uh, you know, in behind the tank. On that one over there, the tank is roughly in this location and I really had to fight getting the tank low enough to make the spark clear. It worked, but it was a real pain. This is working much better. Plus, when I fueled that model up, the CG shifted eight millimeters aft. So hopefully on this one, it's gonna stay pretty much right on the CG, full and empty. Um, so once I got the tank um, pretty much in the location that I liked, um, I built a, um, a little cradle here. And once again, kind of follow the T33. I um, wrapped the tank here with a layer of saran wrap, sprayed on a little mold release, and I basically just laid up a two ply layup of roughly four ounce around the tank, cut out what I thought would be an appropriate cradle, glued a little piece of, uh, or no, I didn't glue it on yet. I just taped on a piece of plywood down on this uh, plywood floor here. And then I inserted a wedge of uh, eighth inch balsa wood, uh, five minute epoxy that together um, with this piece taped to the tank, five minute epoxy to a wedge in of a 
quarter inch balsa and then I popped everything out and I wrapped it all with a one layer of a four ounce around everything. Then I bonded or just C8 it right to the plywood here. And uh, it really locates the tank well. Um, when I go together with the tank permanently, I'm gonna actually glue the tank directly to this cradle here and it's not gonna go anywhere. Once again, you know, the tank is pretty much gonna be part of the model. If you ever wanna get the tank out, you're gonna have to pretty much rip the model apart. Um, so once the tank is located, I can go ahead and locate the engine. Um, once again, refer to the T33. I make up this little jig right here. Um, this is just what I have laying around. Um, I'm gonna include a, a, a template of this if uh, people elect to buy the uh, tank and pipe from me. Um, so that just screw, uh, screws to the existing EDF mounts uh, before you pop them loose. And then once that's located, I take a piece of 564 music wire, heat it up with a torch, and I ride it along my template here, and I actually cut in the groove, okay? Just like this. I mean, it works really well. Take your time, make sure this thing is screwed down in a nice parallel plane across. I even supported it here with a popsicle stick, hot glued on so I didn't get any deflection up here. And uh, if you can see it, it cuts in some grooves really nice for the uh, plywood. Uh, I do that on both sides. And once I get that done, I, um, I make up my little plywood mounts here for the uh, engine mounts and uh, the tailpipe mounts. So they're not ready to glue in yet, but they're, they're close. They fit pretty snug. Oops. This one goes on this side. They fit really, really nice in the, uh, the foam using this method of, uh, um, with the torch and a 564 music wire. So, you know, they're pretty much ready to glue in. I don't drill for the engine or anything until after they're glued in, in case they shift. Um, so, but before you glue them into the model, you're gonna insert the tailpipe. Um, and if you don't do that now, before you glue the mounts in, you're gonna have to unscrew the bell mouth, which it's doable, but I prefer not to do it. So uh, this is a, the pipe that I made. Uh, I calculated the, this is a different length than this one. Uh, and if you can see, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a bit longer because everything is shifted forward. Um, it, it should work out really well. So, um, Basically, the, the tailpipe's ready to go in and just kind of lay in here permanently so I don't have to unscrew the bell mouth. Once the pipe is in here, pretty much just set in there like that, I can go ahead and glue in the, uh, the mounts here. So I'm just gonna Gorilla Glue these in, make sure they're in a um, parallel plane, like that. Then you can uh, actually glue in the tank, okay? And then with the pipe shifted back, you can, the engine's gonna go in like this. I like to keep about an eighth inch uh, gap between the uh, tank and the engine. Then pipe goes back. I like to locate the pipe uh, directly in line with the back of the uh, engine mounting bolts, okay? So, um, you know, once the mounts are glued in, I'll take a lot of time and try to position the engine and pipe as best I can right on the center line. I'll drill them and basically everything's located. The bottom of the uh, model, I did the same thing with the carbon paper. Um, you know, the spar goes behind the uh, tank. Everything's looking good. This is pretty much an exact fit on the tank back here. So I'll apply a little Gorilla Glue here when I uh, go in, when I set this in permanently and everything's gonna be fine. So to get the engine in and out, once everything is glued in, you'll just have to uh, unscrew the pipe, shift it back, and then the engine's gonna come straight on out. Um, 
One thing I've been doing is uh, trying to allow for a good straight access for the uh, fuel line and the cable going to the engine. So the cable going to the engine will be going through this slot right around my uh, little cradle here. And it, you know, it's, it's gonna set just fine right here. And then as far as the fuel line goes, you can see it on this model over here. I just drill a, uh, a hole through this piece right here and the fuel line's nice and relaxed, easy to disconnect. I mean, no problem at all. And then the grate, if I continue to use a grate, which I've been uh, trying to decide if I'm gonna close this up or use the grate. The grate on this one just screws down with, uh, I inserted four little plywood pieces. So the grate just screws down here to so to actually get the fuel line disconnected, you just unscrew the grate and it's right there, it's no problem. So, you know, as you can see, everything is shifted forward almost an inch and three quarters from the first one, this one. And um, I think it's gonna work out really well. This model flies fantastic. Um, I just really not a fan of uh, adding ballast. And doing it this way, the tank is behind the, the uh, spar. It makes it so, so much easier to, uh, to get the tank fitted. Um, and then in the back here, there is an existing, let me get this out of the way. Kind of almost like a puzzle, you gotta do it in the right sequence. There's an existing channel down here for the uh, elevator and um, uh, rudder wires. I just enclosed that with a piece of uh, 16 balsa wood. One of the few things I paint with heat shield is just this. There is no heat shielding anywhere else in the model except right on this balsa wood. Everything's been working fine. I got a lot of models flying up, flying with this setup. No problems at all. Um, so that's pretty much what goes on here. You know, this is pretty much as basic as you can get. The T33 is probably the easiest to do. This is the second. Um, Avante's, I've been selling a lot of Avante parts. It works good too. There's a lot, lot more work in doing Avante than one of these. Uh, so I'm gonna go over the um, equipment install real quick um, on this one, because this model's pretty much gonna be the same way because everything's working well. So, I went over this uh, with another video. Um, nothing's changed. Um, the ballast is up here. Um, I just kind of routed out a little piece of foam and inserted the lead. Um, it works out really well. You know, that way, you know, you can put it in the nose, but I prefer to keep the lead as solid as possible um, in here. You know, you're not gonna really gain that much more by moving it out a few more inches in the moment. So that works out pretty well. Um, I'm running the uh, a 2002 cell LiPo for the turbine and the flight pack. Um, these are these little Venom packs. They work really good. You buy them off of uh, Amazon. Let me get them out of the way so you can see everything a little bit better. Um, once again, Zyko X45 setup. Using the MAP 2-ounce UAT that's uh, kind of recessed in the foam a little bit. I like to keep them at about a 30-degree angle. Keeps the air bubble on the top here where it should be. Um, short line to the pump. Nice, relaxed, uh, straight fit right there. Um, you know, it works out great. Um, got the receiver over here running a 12-channel uh, Jetty Assist mounted on the side. I got the little junction board way back here. I would have put it up here, but I didn't have a uh, long enough cable. Uh, moving the engine, it may fit up here, or you just need to order a little bit longer cable. And I'm using the uh, Castle... Uh, 10 amp BEC, regulating the uh, voltage in the uh, the 7.4 voltage down to uh, about 5.6 because that's what the uh, servos and um, 
landing gear were pretty much designed around and they work really well. Other than that, you know, it's a really easy install. Um, you got a, a bunch of room, I consider a bunch of room up in here. Um, Model Fly is fantastic. And uh, if you're interested in an install kit, just uh, get in touch with me. All right, thanks for watching.